Back on our next cold front, I'll show you what that means for rain chances and temperatures coming up in your forecast. We begin with an update to that breaking news we first brought you on Way 31 News at 4. I'm Dan Schaefer. And I'm Mikkel Williams. A Madison County Sheriff's deputy say a death investigation underway in Huntsville is not suspicious. It says it received a 911 call just a few hours ago about a body on Oconee Drive. Once investigators arrived, they determined it was an isolated incident. We're also closely following that deadly fire in Morgan County. We were the first ones on that devastating scene off Highway 36 in Somerville. Way 31 weekend anchor Rob Snead joins us live now with the very latest information. Rob. Yeah, I just got off the phone with the Morgan County coroner, and he did confirm to me that uh, the victim who died inside of that home is 95-year-old Elizabeth Maxwell. And I did also speak with her family out here. None of them wanted to go on camera, but they told me that she was, quote, a great Christian woman, and she was also a lifelong member of Antioch Methodist Church. They said that she will most be remembered for her kindness. Now, this is what the scene looked like earlier. You can take a look. Authorities told me that the fire started around 1130 this morning off of Highway 36. The house was it's completely destroyed. It's it's a total loss, according to uh, investigators out here. Now, uh, Adrian Fowler, the fire chief with Odin Ridge Fire and Rescue, told me that the flames made it extremely difficult to get to uh, this woman. And I'm also told uh, that this is still under investigation. But hear what else they had to say. Uh, it's a total loss. Uh, the fire pretty much went through it. It's a total loss at this time. Was there so, anything impeding you guys from getting to her? Uh, it was, it was, the fire conditions were pretty heavy. And right now, the fire marshal's office is investigating this fire. Of course, we'll bring you the latest as we get the information to us. For now, I'm reporting live in Somerville with coverage you can count on. Rob Sneed, Way 31 News. All right, thanks, Rob. After a, a chilly weekend, we have uh, warmed up a little bit. Looking forward to even warmer temperatures this week. Jeff, you're also tracking rain later in the week as well. What's going on right now? Oh, right now, things are quiet, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing some warmer weather. Ahead of this, the next system that we're tracking, it'll be a cold front arriving Thursday. We will pick up rain with it. A little temperature drop off behind it, but uh, not like what we had this past weekend. But we'll talk about the changes that will be ahead and what that means for your weekend coming up in just a few minutes. Right now, though, all quiet out there. Way 31 Triple Doppler Network showing a clean sweep all across North Alabama and southern Middle Tennessee. We're looking forward to a calm evening, although it'll be a chilly one as temperatures drop off again overnight tonight. They're already on the way down, including Huntsville checking in right now at 53, 52 in Gunnersville, Decatur and Athens. You're already in the 40s, 46 in Athens, 40 47 Decatur out here toward the Shoals. We're running right around that 50 degree mark over towards Fort Payne. Also already in the 40s there at 47. Looking live outside right now with our Way 31 Skycam network powered by Thompson Roofing and Construction from the top of Montesano. Beautiful sunset underway out there. And again, we do have a chilly but otherwise quiet evening expected. Here's a breakdown over the next 12 hours. Temperatures between now and 9 o'clock will be falling back into the 30s. And then we'll continue to drift back to around that freezing mark overnight tonight. Relatively quiet, just a few clouds coming in as the night wears on. Back in a few moments, again, we'll talk about the warm up ahead and the changes for the end of the week on the way in your forecast. All right, thanks, Jeff. Talk to you then. Never let the weather catch you off guard. Download the Way 31 Storm Tracker weather app. You'll have 24 7 access to our 31 Triple Doppler network. The knowledge of our weather team right there in the palm of your hand is free for Apple and Android devices. Panic for some at Alabama A&M University right now was some say they can't file their taxes because of identity theft reports among students. Yeah, Way 31's Paige Meyer spent the day speaking with those students and looking into their claims. What did you learn, Paige? Dan, students here at Alabama A&M tell me it's extremely concerning that their classmates' personal information is somehow getting taken. A lot of them are frightened, saying it's only a matter of time until their information somehow ends up in the wrong hands. Now, Alabama A&M sent an email to students last week saying they are aware of several incidences where students' social security numbers were potentially compromised. At this time, exactly how many students were impacted in total is unclear, but countless people have taken to social media to share their similar experiences. Many posts say parents went in to claim their child is a dependent on their taxes, only to find someone use their child's social security number for their own tax return. Jamari Thomas hasn't had any of his personal information stolen to his knowledge, but feels for his classmates who have been affected. Jamari is an out-of-state student who says many students like him who are away from their families are extremely frightened right now.
your social security, that's like your whole identity. So, you know, to have that being taken away from you, that's just, that's like, what can you do, you know? And also you're not getting your, the money that you need in order to, to thrive here in college. And, you know, we're all young adults. We're all still trying to figure it out. So, you know, and that's just making it harder on us. Alabama A&M told its students, if you think it's happened to you, contact the school and file a fraud report with the IRS. The university told its students they are actively investigating, and we are working to learn who is responsible. Reporting live in Huntsville with coverage you can count on. Paige Meyer, Way 31 News. Thanks, Paige. We are working now to learn more about a high-speed police chase that ended in a crash. Scottsboro police say it started around 11 last night on Highway 72. Officers tried to pull over a car that was clocked at 115 miles per hour. That car then turned onto Highway 79, and that's when police say the driver lost control and flipped. Four people were taken to the hospital by ambulance. A fifth person had to be flown by helicopter to Huntsville Hospital and is in stable condition. The Alabama Law Enforcement Agency expects charges at a later date. A disturbing discovery in the shoals overnight. Authorities found more than a dozen dying and starving dogs in Corbett County. The Sheriff's Office and Corbett County Animal Control spent the night at this abandoned home off Bethel Cemetery Road. They say they saved 14 dogs. Four of them were puppies. Two did not survive. Investigators say it's early investigation, but believe it may be a puppy mill operation. Fellow animal lovers in the community are in shock. But we did have some evidence that leads us to believe that this could possibly be uh, the, the people that are responsible for this for running a, a puppy mill or a dog breeding mill on this property. But at this time, it's still ongoing, so we'll know more as we move forward with the investigation. No, we take care of our dogs. Well, you saw Gracie jump the fence to get out here to us to get love and petting. Um, no, we love animals. We love our animals and of course all of our goats that we've got and our horses out there. You know, you can tell from that we're animal lovers. So no, I, I can't, I can't phantom something like that going on. The Corpus County Animal Shelter is housing the rescued puppies. The shelter is in desperate need of supplies like bleach, pop-up kennels and puppy food. As for the abandoned home, no word yet on who owns it. Investigators are trying to figure out who's responsible for leaving the dogs. If you like cruise vacations, now's the time to book one. We'll tell you about some deals that you might want to get in on. And temperatures getting a nice bump as we work our way towards midweek. I'll have the latest details on the warm up and how long it'll stick around coming up in your forecast. Coverage you can count on. You're watching Way 31 News at 6 with Dan Schaefer, Nikel Williams, Chief Meteorologist Jeff Castle and Sports with Nolan Knight.
If you're dreaming of getting away because of the winter weather, now is a great time to book a cruise and score some big deals. Jen Sullivan explains why in today's Consumer Watch. It's time to start cruising for a deal. Major cruise companies are offering big discounts right now. It's known as wave season. Wave season is the time of year when the entire cruise industry goes on sale. Wave season starts in January and runs through the beginning of March. You don't need to travel right now to score the deals. Travel expert Emily Kaufman says you can book a cruise all the way through 2025. You just need to book the trip now. So what kind of deals are we seeing? They've got added value offers with things like two for one sailing, cabin category upgrades, credits to be used on board. From river cruises to luxury ships anywhere around the world, this is the time to score discounts. Right now, Norwegian Cruise Lines is offering a two for one deal. That's on many of their cruises, even the European destinations. They're also offering a savings of $1,000 for free third or fourth guests on select dates. Royal Caribbean Cruises boasts up to $700 off plus 60% off a second guest and kids sail for free. MSC is offering 40% off and up to $400 onboard credit, but that deal only lasts until February 20th. Kaufman says cruises are a great way for families to save. For one price, you get your accommodations, your meals, your activities on board. If you are booking for a future trip, keep in mind that prices will be even cheaper if you book during an off-season time. And of course, you do have to factor in flights if you have to fly to the port city where the cruise departs from. For Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. Now, Wave 31 Storm Tracker Chief Meteorologist Jeff Castle with 31 Triple Dollar. Good Monday afternoon, everyone. Your President's Day turning out fantastic weather-wise. It was cold, though, this morning, but we did manage to bump the temperature up into the afternoon hours. Looks like we're going to keep it quiet for at least the first half of the week. And then Thursday, that is our next weather maker coming on in. Cold front will be arriving. We will pick up some rain out of it, and there is going to be a little bit of a temperature change behind it. But right now, not significant. In fact, I'm not seeing any signs of any substantial cold air showing up here for the rest of the month of February. Those rain chances, though, back on your Thursday, and we will cool a little bit heading into the upcoming weekend. But it also looks like the forecast will be quiet heading into your Saturday and Sunday as it stands right now. Let's give you an early preview here with the Way 31 Storm Tracker Future Radar on Thursday. We'll start you off Thursday morning, 10 o'clock, probably dry at that point but waking up to cloudy skies. We hit Thursday afternoon. Here comes the wet weather, some scattered showers, maybe a rumble of thunder before it's all said and done, although we're not seeing any substantial risk of severe weather out of this, but we'll keep an eye on that for you given the time of year. And we're about ready to head into the spring season. You know what that brings. 11 o'clock in the evening on Thursday is likely when rain will be the most widespread across North Alabama and Southern Middle Tennessee. And then heading into Friday morning around 6 a.m. or so, getting the wet weather out of here, and uh, that is a good trend, getting ready to head into the weekend. Checking things out here on your threat tracker. There are no issues through Wednesday. Pleasant and warmer weather on the way through midweek, and then Thursday we'll just kind of throw up the caution here. Uh, really more inconvenient type of rainfall. It's not going to be particularly high impact, but again, Thursday will be the next day to break out the rain gear across the area. Right now, all quiet on Way 31, triple Doppler, not picking up any precip out there, but we will see some cloud cover rolling in overnight tonight. None of that will bring precip with it. Let's show you the latest hour of our look here through midweek and those clouds are basically knocking on the door of the shoals right now. That's why we have that nice sunset uh, underway here across the area and those pretty colors there on the western sky. By the time we hit midnight, that cloud cover continuing to move in across the area and through tomorrow morning there'll be a little bit of a blanket of thin cloudiness waking up on your Tuesday but again nothing that will produce any sort of precip and that cloud cover won't last long tomorrow by the noon hour we're already starting to return to mainly sunny conditions and it looks like lots of blue sky and sun will be on the way tomorrow afternoon we head into your Wednesday waking up to some sunshine and then later in the day Wednesday we will see an increase in cloudiness again that'll be in advance of that next cold front bringing the rain chances back in here for Thursday Lows tonight, they'll be cold again, especially here in our eastern valleys. Uh, Mintone, of course, on the ridgetop 27, down in the valley in Fort Payne 28, Scottsboro 31, Huntsville to Owens Crossroads to New Hope. Also into the low 30s tonight. Decatur, you drop to freezing. Falkville the same. And if you're out here into the shoals, within a degree or two of the freezing mark, but may stay just above 32 in those areas. Uh, that's your planner for 
actually last Saturday, not for tomorrow. These are the numbers that we expect, though, tomorrow afternoon. 61 in Huntsville, 63 in Muscle Shoals, and around 60 in Fort Payne. Checking things out here, your Way 31 Storm Tracker 10-day forecast. We get a nice bump in temperature to around 70 on Wednesday. That next front coming Thursday, so expect rain with it. But uh, again, this system will come and go pretty quickly. So we return to dry weather heading into the weekend. A little cooler Friday, Saturday in the low 60s, but that's still not bad. And then a quick return to around 70 degrees again by the end of the weekend and early next week. Slowly warming up, so it looks yeah, good. We're Love seeing uh, more of those warm days than the cold ones. More we 70s like it. on the 10 day. Yeah. That's a good thing. Thanks, Jeff. Uh huh. When we come back, all the action from the high school basketball semifinal tournament. We're bringing you sports coverage you could count on. Now, Way 31 Sports with Nolan Knight. It's another busy week of high school basketball. The region semifinals finally coming to a close here at Wallace State Community College as Class 4A takes center stage as four North Alabama schools hope to clinch their spot in the Elite Eight. Let's begin this semifinal action with the Class 4A boys semifinals. West Morgan facing off against Haleyville as they were hoping to clinch their ticket to the Elite Eight, but Haleyville started this game hot. Nice feed inside for Brent Coleman, who finishes at the rim, but that's when West Morgan would take over. First, it's a nice ball movement, which leads to this open look for Jalen Fletcher. He buries the three, and that would lead to more triples. A three this time for number three, Jay Garland. Big bucket for West Morgan as their lead would build the double digits. Haleyville would storm back late to tie the game, and that's when Landon Henderson would call game deep three at the buzzer 
That wins it. The Rebels, they're headed to the 4A region finals with a 50-47 win over Haleyville. And they would take on the winner of this semifinal game between Deschler and Good Hope. It was Good Hope with some impressive play in the first half. Check out the reverse layup for Jacob Hayes. The Tigers, though, they would have a response. How about a step back three for Aiden Woody? Cash, one of his four threes today. Good Hope with a three of their own. It's Kamal Bell from outside. This game, a shootout the second half. It was the inside attack that impressed. Jackson Jovi with the bucket and the foul to extend a late lead. And then Garrett Reed puts it away with an and one of his own. Deschler, they advance to the Class 4A region final with an 81-71 win over Good Hope. In the girls Class 4A semifinal, it was a familiar matchup. The fourth straight year that Deschler and Good Hope have squared off at the Northwest Regional. And for this year's edition, it was Ava McSwain that stole the show. She would extend a fourth quarter lead with an outside tray. Then later it's Ms. Swain again. She'd go on a personal 10 point run. She would lead the game with 30 points. The Tigers would try to stick around though. Reese Davis with a basket for Deschler. The Good Hope attack just too hard to stop. They advanced to the 4A final with a 68-45 win over the Tigers. And the other semifinal matchup, the Priceville Bulldogs were looking for their second straight Northwest region title. They were taking on Hamilton and the Bulldogs would build an early lead. Nice take here from Lillian Bloodworth, but Hamilton would stick around. Catch and shoot three from Jordan Parker. Priceville though, they would continue to battle. Check out the ball movement, all five girls Touch the ball on this one as they get an easy basket at the rim. And that's when they activate Abby Langless. She would fight through contact here for two. This game would go down to the wire. It was Bloodworth that would go for blood. The go-ahead basket and then the game ceiling steal, punching the Bulldogs ticket to the Elite Eight with a 47-42 win over Hamilton. All right, well, that will wrap up our 4A Northwest Region semifinals coming up tonight at 10. Three area schools hope to punch their ticket to Birmingham with the win in the 1A Northwest Region finals. For everything Northeast Region semifinals, we'll send it to Max Cohan. A trip to the Elite Eight was still up for grabs for DAR and New Hope as the second week of regionals tipped off here at Jacksonville State. Let's start in 4A, where the Indians were trying to punch a ticket to the region final for the first time since 2020, and this game was a nail-biter. Only one point separated New Hope and Aniana at the start of the fourth, but a couple minutes in, the Indians were in control, taking a three-point lead as Lucas Terry rolls it in off the glass, and the New Hope tribe goes wild. He'd lead them with 16 points, but the Redskins were still hanging around, and Demarion Bothwell got the board and the bucket, plus the bonus shot to keep things close, but he would miss the would-be tying free throw, keeping the Indians in front. New Hope would put the game away with a huge steal, a long pass, and a fast break finish from Riley McGeehee as they advance to Thursday's Northeast Region Final, 51-47. Up next, it's head coach Matt Nelson working double duty, trying to get both Indians teams to the final. Early on, Jada Bates was doing a lot of heavy lifting for New Hope, filling up the stat sheet with a 10-point first half. This layup gave the Indians a three-point lead in the second quarter. And how about Ava Ross? She only took one shot in the first half, but she drained it as the three-pointer gives New Hope a six-point lead. But the Bulldogs had the game tied at the half and would take this one from the Indians as they fall 44-40. And in the final game of the first session, it's DAR and Aniston. The Patriots' last trip to the region final was all the way back in 2001, and the Pats looked to plant the flag early, but the Bulldogs took the lead at the end of the first, holding it into the fourth. But then the Pats flipped the script. Trey Bolt drains the quick three to make it a two-point game. Still trailing, they send it over to Reed Lemley, and he gets the hoop and the harm to make it even closer. But the biggest play would come on defense as a steal put them on the fast break, and a foul sends Lawson Harbin to the line, down one. He'd sink both of them, and the Pats defense would hold as DAR's wild run continues with the 55-51 dub. Still to come, the 1A regional final with Skyline's girls and boys both trying to punch their tickets to Birmingham. We'll have that coming up tonight at 10. For now, reporting in Jacksonville with coverage you can count on, Max Cohan, Way 31 Sports.